Welcome to our new videocast. Let's talk wireless IoT. The videocast is powered by RFID and Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2021 and will feature exhibitors, sponsors and speakers of the event. You want to meet the RFID and Wireless IoT experts live? No problem. Make sure to get a ticket and join the live event RFID and Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2021 in the RMCC in Wiesbaden, Germany. Or join the simultaneous virtual event that will contain live streams from the conference on-site and numerous speakers as well as webinars, roundtables and of course easy to use communication systems. But for now, let's focus on the guests. See you in Wiesbaden. So, a warm welcome to our fifth episode of the Let's Talk Wireless IoT videocast powered by RFID and Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2021. Our today's guest is Richard Aufreiter, Vice President Marketing at HID Global. And as usually, we have prepared three different question blocks, questioning some of uh, HID's projects, information about HID itself, some personal elements for, for Mr. Aufreiter itself, and of course, what HID has prepared for the RFID and Wireless IoT tomorrow, 2021, in Wiesbaden. So, let's welcome our today's guest. Hello, hello Richard. Peters. Yes, hello. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. It's a wonderful autumn day, bright sunshine, so cannot complain about that. Oh, I, I, I wish I could say the same, but we have today a, a, a pretty stormy weather, cold wind. Really? Come to yeah. Austria. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you were um, located in Austria today? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, let's start with our first question, should we? Sure, certainly. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. So my first question is like um, some of our listeners already knew or watchers, of course. Um, can we meet you? in person in Wiesbaden. Will you be on site at the booth? Yes, absolutely. So I'm, I'm looking forward to meet the major RFID industry players and potential customers finally face to face again. HRD will be present not just with me, but we will have seven people from various business areas so that we can sure to support prospects uh, with the expert knowledge on various needs. In addition, we will also have a virtual roundtable on the first day uh, to support those people who cannot attend live in the session. Okay, so important information for everybody. If you have uh, maybe more questions rise up during our talk um, today, <coughs> and feel free to meet um, Richard in person or even um, more people from various business areas from HID to ask any further questions i'm sure hid can provide all kind of information in detail um, in a personal best. talk <laughs> okay and you also mentioned an important point um the virtual roundtable but let's come back to that later but um just so you know hid will not only be um ready for a talk on site but also spe uh, prepared a special concept for the virtual event as well so then I would continue with my second question. What is your personal role at HID Global and how long have you already been with the company? Okay, so uh, I've been with the company for 11 years now and my role is called Vice President of Product Marketing for the Identification Technologies Business Area. Uh, so it's a very, very long word, Identification Technologies Business Area basically is covering the industrial RFID tags and, and, and services around it. Oh, okay. So y you are all already working 11 years for, for HID. Can you still remember uh, how it started? Can you remember your first day? <laughs> um, yeah, at least the first week, uh, I think, is, is, is still in my mind. So at that time, uh, it, I, I originally came from the software industry, so I had to learn about RFID uh, with joining HID, but that was uh, quite, worked quite well with the help of my colleagues. 
And at that time, HRD was mostly known for access control and not so much for uh, the type of products that uh, we are exhibiting at RFID tomorrow, because these products came in from a company called Sokimat. Mm -hmm. And at that time, people were very well aware of Sokimat and Sokimat products, but not of HRD. So I remember my very first trade show uh, showing up as HRD, explaining to the people we were the former Sokimat, and then uh, they made the connection. And since then, I would say I'm very busy in, in promoting HRD as, as a player in the field and, and getting away from Sokimat. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine how much how much changed uh, over the 11 uh, last 11 years, not only how the technology itself developed. Um, how would you uh, how would you rate the 11, 11 years? I can imagine it was was uh, it was a was a great journey. But of course, like you already said, it was also a busy time. Yes, I cannot complain uh, about being bored. It's it's extremely busy all the time. But uh, I would say it's, it's the, for me, the ideal job because it's so diverse. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we are not, um, we and also I in, in my role are not locked in, in any particular uh, segment or task. It's very diverse, <clears throat> organizing shows like this, working with customers on different projects from waste management to medical research to location services, whatever it is. Um, so it's a very diverse role and therefore it never gets boring and that's a very good thing. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, that brings me to my third question. What products and or solutions are you in charge of at HID Global? You partly already answered it, but... <laughs> yeah, so the overall story is a, is a bit um, more complex than that. So. As a company, we claim to power the trusted identities of the world's people, places, and things. And this includes a very broad portfolio, basically of RFID and, and RFID-related products and services. In, in general, we are structured into six business areas uh, that ranges from physical access control for mobile access, which is probably what HRD is most known for, especially in the US. Uh, then there is security insurance card personalization printer services, embedded readers, biometric modules. We have a software department around PKI and authentication service, electronic passport, citizen ID cards. Uh, and then there is the sixth business segment, and uh, this is where I come from. Uh, this one is focused on industrial RFID components and enabling services. And the use cases can vary a lot from animal ID through automation, logistics, medical asset tracking, laundry RTLS, condition monitoring, loyalty cards, public transport and event access tickets. Uh, so because we always we own the, the technology and not so much the use case, we can be very broad. Yeah? Uh, so mm. our speciality is designing, uh, taking the chip, designing an antenna, designing a housing and also manufacturing it on a large scale, in a large scale automated way and producing mm. enabling software around it. Mm. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for, these, for this explanation. Um, and that brings me also to my next question. I'm sure that a lot of uh, our visitors um, um, already saw maybe on social media that um, HRD Global has recently acquired new companies. Could you tell me a little bit more about them and how they add to HRD Global's product portfolio? Sure. So we are very excited to have all these new colleagues on board. Uh, in general, as you may be aware, HRD acquires around one to two companies every year. And this year we are already at three. And all these three are for my business area, so that keeps me quite busy. Uh, the first one in February was, February this year was Technology Solutions, also known as TSL. It's a well-known reader of handheld reader manufacturer. They are based in the UK, uh, focusing on RAIN RFID handheld readers in, in three model lines, uh, a standard, a rugged, and a variable form factor. And the variable They also have in a version for LF and HF uh, in the separate version for UHF. Uh, special advantage of these readers is that they, they work with via Bluetooth or USB with any display device. So all the TSL readers uh, have a 
uh, work separately with a device or tablet or smartphone that is not integrated in the reader, so customers have the choice what, what to use. Mm -hmm. They have a, a connector that's called EPOP lock uh, that they hold a patent for that hold these devices in place if you don't want to keep them separate and also keep them charged uh, if they desire. And they have also this communication protocol uh, called ASCII 2 is quite widely used and is supported by over 100 apps from various vendors already in the world. Then in March, quickly after, we acquired the textile services business from Invengo. Uh, this business unit is primarily located in France and a strong player in the RFID laundry business. Uh, they have the Lean Track UHF laundry tech family, uh, but they also provide a full laundry lifecycle solution, including uh, readers, gates, tabletop handlets, and a software called Acuity for hotels, hospitals, nursing homes, and industrial laundries uh, to manage the life cycle of the linen. And uh, the fact that they were using already TSL handheld readers before the acquisition as part of their solution was a very nice fit uh, acquiring. Of course, it was not the main reason, but the very nice fit uh, bringing mm -hmm. the two companies together. And finally, the third one in August this year, we added Omni ID. It's, uh, I think, a well known player in our industry for rugged uh, RFID tags and outdoor IoT sensors and also location devices. Uh, they target rugged environments such as oil and gas or transport logistics and, and related uh, environments. Also, expanding the sales and manufacturing footprint in India and China with Omni ID uh, was one of the reasons for acquiring them uh, because we uh, their factory provides a second source and, and their sales team in India provides us some access to this market as well. So we enhance the ability to serve the customers locally in Asia <coughs> uh, with the technology. Mm. And also this portfolio fits very well in what we have offered today as industrial smart components and IoT services. Mm. And of course, they will also be at the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that was just something um, um, that I find very interesting that by by adding companies or you also mentioned specific products, specific um, software that these companies maybe already have, specific um, um, fields or industries where they are present, um, HID can also make sure to, to always offer all kind of uh, wide range of varieties for for any kind of solution to make sure to have uh, the absolute up-to-date products um, and information yeah it makes goal, sense yeah. yeah absolutely i can understand it even if it's of course it's um so the the hid um uh, shopping list definitely is a bit different one to a regular one so um, two companies um per year now already three um, I, I can't imagine that it, that's uh, busy times for you. Uh, yes, I can confirm that. <laughs> okay. So um, is HID Global directly involved in projects or is it mainly via partners? So here we need to distinguish a bit. I'm answering now for my business area. <clears throat> and in this business area, we generally sell to two types of customers. It's OEMs and system integrators. Mm. OEMs, typically, they are manufacturers. They embed one of our RFID components into their products and make this product what they call intelligent. So, for example, for automatic configuration, preventing error of the use or automated billing of the usage or all of that. Examples could be filters, replaceable tools like medical grills, uh, cartridges, uh, for example, printer cartridges that, uh, you know, printers detect whether it's an authentic cartridge or not. Uh, this principle is also used by other devices. Uh, very often, or I would say, yeah, very often, these are custom designs that you don't see on our website. You don't see them even in the customer's product because the RFID is embedded mm -hmm. and it just works. And, and HRD's capability to cover all the RFID frequencies from LF, HF uh, to UHF, and also the fact that we own the manufacturing process. We design uh, our own manufacturing machines. Sometimes we have a team that builds these machines. 
and runs them, uh, uh, gives a very stable partnership with these customers. And typically these projects last many years. Uh, and, and as the products involve from our side and their side, we constantly make adjustments. So basically the OEM, they can focus on what they are good at they, to make their product and we RFID enable it, uh, whatever they are making without them uh, having to concern too much about the RFID details. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the other main customer type is system integrator. So these take uh, a tag and or uh, so, uh, enabling software from us, the ad readers. They verticalize the software, for example, building on top of our API, a vertical solution for a hospital or, or something like that. And uh, then sell the full solution. So mm. by that, this is the reason why we can be so broad because on the tech side, it's mainly a physics problem that we need to solve. So a certain form factor with a certain performance uh, at a certain cost, uh, manufactured uh, at a large scale and with the enabling software taking away for example the burden of calculating a real-time location position based on signal strengths or whatever we do the calculation we put the blue dot on the map but what the customer then do with the blue dot whether that's a hospital bed or something else or the business logic around this is top typically not what we do but our customers do them yeah? and on the, uh, this means that we never sell to end users, um, neither individuals nor organizations like hospitals or enterprises directly. There is one exception if the customers are so big, the end user is so big that they can be their own system integrator and they have their own software department, for example, or installation department, uh, then we would sell to an end user, but that's uh, not typically uh, typical route to market for us. Okay, and uh, can you think of a current, uh, currently project you're involved in? Maybe without naming anything specific, but uh, could you perhaps describe an application or solution? Yeah. So personally, I'm I'm not involved in in, in daily project business since I'm uh, in, as we said in product marketing. But, and since we are so broad, we have dozens of projects going on in parallel at, at every given time. Yeah? But I can give you some examples of more recent projects that are public and where we also have a case study published for it. So one is Collectors Universe uh, in US. They are utilizing our trusted tech service to authenticate uh, high value collectible coins. And they embed uh, these coins are in a housing. In this housing, there is a trusted tech, NFC tech embedded. And that allows anyone with an NFC phone to verify the authenticity and, and get some additional information on, on this collectible coin. Another example uh, just from this year is, is uh, just a race course in UK. So they are taking advantage of the HRD event management ticketing platform uh, for event access, both for physical and mobile tickets. And the same team also has uh, just recently in August achieved the world's first Calypso certification for host card emulation that enables Calypso based mobile transport tickets on a smartphone. So Calypso is a, is a card operating standard for uh, mobile transport tickets. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, Bay State College, uh, this is also in US. They, for example, used our BLE based location services to ensure workplace safety and physical distancing compliance after students return to the campus post COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, so you see, these are just three very diverse examples that are public, many OEM projects going on in for automation, laundry, medical equipment that I cannot talk about, but that, as I said, they are OEM projects are typically running in the, run in the background, mm -hmm. uh, but there is plenty of, of use cases in, many different verticals. Okay, maybe an important information for uh, all watchers or visitors. You just mentioned the Collectors Universe, um, for example, project and um, the editorial team did also an article together with HRD Global um, about this and it's available on the website. Um, I think we already did two articles this year so far. One is also from the healthcare sector. So if you're looking for more information about this, please make sure to check it out. And I also want to mention that um, there will also be lectures from HRD Global. And I'm sure there are more information 
also about um, these kinds of projects and solutions. So make sure to uh, follow the lectures and um, not only possible on site, but also in the live stream of the virtual event. Um, and if you have even more detailed question about any kind of these projects, then of course, I'm sure that the HIT team is uh, more than happy to welcome you yeah. at the booth in the exhibition. Okay, so uh, you thank have you. one more article to come with you later this year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I got a I got a note from the editorial team, and it's like um, uh, it's called a little teaser. Current editorial work is on its way. So uh, great that you mentioned it. That was also written down for me, um, and I think. Can we already announce what industry is it about? Sure, go ahead. Um, I think it's law. It's about the laundry management. Yes, correct. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for more information about this that will be uh, released soon. Okay, so now you gave us a great overview about all these different um, projects. Um, which projects do you find personally most challenging or maybe what part of the projects do you find personally most challenging? So for me personally, since I don't work directly in the customer projects, as I said, the most exciting project is currently the integration of the three acquisitions that we added this year, obviously. So this is means that we have over 250 new colleagues that uh, come into the team with a lot of talent, ideas, and but the different processes and we need to bring all this together to form a strong team that is commercially successful and and good and stable enough that we can bring on the next uh, acquisitions for in the years to come yeah, because this will not be the last one um yeah i i can't even imagine how how this is done how 250 new colleagues from three <laughs> different companies are integrated in the team I, yeah I can't even imagine it, but 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 like you already said, busy times, um, and yeah, that seems definitely like a like a huge like a huge project. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, yes, it is big, but of course, as you know, it's it's also a matter of practice. Since HRD does that mm -hmm. every year, mm -hmm. we have a certain process, we have checklists, we have a, a team coordinating that. So because we do this constantly, uh, it's less of a burden than if you do it only once in 10 years, right? Mm. Mm. Okay, there are already processes that you can rely on. But it doesn't mean it's easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that brings us uh, already to the third question block, and that is yes. the block regarding HID and the RFID and Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2021. So here's my first question. What does the participation at the Tomorrow 21 mean for your company and for you personally? Yeah, so the RFID show has historically been our major event in Europe. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Um, <clears throat> since HID, as I said, especially in my business area, we are very vertically agnostic. Uh, pure vertical shows that do not make that much sense for us because we only supply a component to it. And an RFID and IoT cent technology centric show like this is the best place for us to network with the other industry players and potential customers. So personally, I would say I look forward to speaking in front of a live audience again and, and also meeting the people. I'm in home office uh, stuck now without business travel since one and a half years. So getting out of the door uh, for business is, is for sure something I look forward to. Absolutely. And um, maybe I can add that uh, HID Global um, is not only a regular exhibitor of the event, but also one of the platinum sponsors, main partners of the event, and also partner of the event itself, but also of the publishing house for more than more than 10 years so since i started right <laughs> yeah <laughs> right oh all right yeah um okay so i come also from a from a background of organizing this event and of course we had some uh, challenging times over the past one and a half years during the corona pandemic a lot of things that we had to learn quick so my question would be 
is the exhibition important for HD Global, especially during the Corona pandemic? Uh, yes, of course. So, as I said, we are very happy to at least partially leave the COVID-19 lockdown times behind and, and do real life interactions with prospect and partners, even given that there will be COVID security measures in place at this show. Uh, there is no doubt, but uh, we still look forward to have a, a reasonably large attendance and lots of interesting discussions, not just on the virtual side, but also on the real life side. Absolutely. There will be uh, measurements in place to create a safe environment, but the absolute good news is that it is possible with certain measurements to meet again face to face and to make sure that everybody can meet within safe parameters. So um, I also absolutely agree that people are looking forward to to go out, to travel, to meet, to see someone, to talk to someone in person. It's a completely different kind of conversation that you can have online or that you can have on site. There are just more information to, to transport beyond your basic sentences you are telling, just what your whole body is telling someone. Um, and, and I absolutely can touch and feel the products, for example, at the show, which you can not in the virtual world. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so everybody who is looking for, for more information, please make sure to stop at the HID booth. It's right on top in the middle of the exhibition hall. You, you cannot miss it. And uh, of course, make also sure to follow the lectures. And now my already final question. What products and solutions will you and your team be presenting at the exhibition? Okay, so at the booth, we will present a selection of our RFID components. So that's tags, beacons, handheld readers from TSL. And uh, we will include samples, of course, also from our new colleagues from OmniID and Textile Services. Uh, you need to know in, in my business area alone, we have over 5,000 part numbers. So we will not show all of them at the, at the show floor, obviously, but uh, we have a, a selection that will fit on the booth. Yeah? So there will be some new products that we will show, um, just a few examples. We have a new ATEX certified Polytech that is a flame resistant rocket disc, especially designed to work in potentially explosive environments. Mm. Pretty cool product is the Lintrek XS. Uh, it's one of the tiniest RFID laundry tags on the market, which needs only 25% of the space of the traditional UHF laundry tag. <clears throat> so it will allow very discreet placement and does not disturb the barrier. That's especially important for personal clothes of in, uh, uh, people in the, living in nursing homes, for example. Yeah? Um, and then, of course, besides the TSL readers, um, as you s the newest colleagues are from OmniID, so some uh, OmniID colleague will be on site. And we will show tags from uh, this new group, including the new Sense Magnus passive tags and labels that can do temperature sensing as a passive tech, for example, for data center monitoring and other applications. And uh, also the Omni IoT sensor portfolio. So these devices, these IoT devices, they are supporting GPS and LoRaWAN communication for long distance outdoor location services, which is a very nice addition to our current location services that work on BLE and are targeted towards indoor. So with OmniKey now we have services both for indoor and for outdoor large scale uh, uh, asset tracking and location service applications. And for indoor, for example, we recently added uh, Aruba certified support for their wireless access points to enable location services for existing Aruba installations. So for example, if you're a hospital, you have Aruba BLE enabled access points already in place. Basically, you roll out the beacons, you turn on the switch, and you have a basic RTLS system in place from day one. Huh? So, and besides that, yeah, we will present two speaking slots. Um, one is me talking about RFID in harsh environments, uh, covering the product range, including HD traditional and, and Omni ID, and uh, talking about the standards 
uh, that are relevant in these scenarios, what you need to consider uh, when selecting tags for harsh environments, uh, these kinds of topics. And uh, Guido Kurman, a colleague of mine uh, from Germany, will talk about textile services <coughs> and the needs to, and, and, and uh, ways to handle large volumes of linens and uniforms. And both of these sessions will be followed by an hour, a uh, special roundtable hour, so that uh, we bring in an expert specifically on this topic I was talking about. So in case you, any of you have questions that I cannot answer or my colleague cannot answer, these experts will be able to bring you the answer in the virtual roundtable right after the session. Okay. Um, Richard, I hope this is okay, but I, but I have one question um, for the ATEX certified Polytech. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned it is designed to work in potentially explosive environments. Yes. Could you could you t tell me what potentially explosive <laughs> environments are? <laughs> sure. I, I mean, a potentially explosive environment is at the gas station when you fill your car. Ah, okay. When you are standing right next to the car, then the vapor of the gas comes out, mm -hmm. and uh, this is potentially explosive. Whereas when you are inside the gas tank of of uh, a gas station, then it's not potentially explosive. It's always explosive in there when there is gas inside, right? Uh, so there is different ratings depending on how likely it is that this thing will explode uh, when uh, there is a spark, for example. Yeah. Typically, ATEX is around uh, uh, devices that heat up because you mm -hmm. want to make sure if, if there is something battery powered or, or machine powered, that it does not heat up beyond the maximum temperature that cause and causes an explosion. And this, of course, depends on the environment. Yeah? Okay. For passive techs, it's a bit easier because they don't heat up by themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for, for this clarification. I, I watch will... my session and I will have a slide on it. <laughs> <laughs> and not only watch the session, but um, you mentioned also a second very important point is the round tables. So the round tables will be available online. It's um, a room where you can absolutely um, freely access and talk with the RFID, uh, uh, HID global experts personally. Um, and please make sure to do so. So the the lecture itself will, of course, not um, include all kinds of details because the time slot is limited, but the experts at the roundtables are there to ask any kind of detailed questions. So please visit the roundtables after the lectures. You can't miss them. It's right on top. It's under the tape roundtables and the HID roundtable is the first one on the list. So thank you very much for this detailed information, what HID has prepared for the booth itself. And you heard how much how much different part numbers HID has. Of course, not everything of it can be um, showed at the booth. So make sure to step by and uh, go beyond everything you can see, talk about everything you are interested in, uh, talk about different technologies, different solutions, different environments. And I'm sure that HID can definitely provide the information you are looking for. The expert team will be on site. Um, and Richard, is it too much if I say you're absolutely looking forward to answer all kinds of questions? At least I will give it a try. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So the last thing for me to do is thank you. Thank you for these great uh, for these great insights into HID, but also we have we heard some personal information from you. Thank you for for that. And we of course heard what HID has in stock for the event on site itself, what visitors can expect, but not only on site, also virtually on the round tables, of course, at the booth and the live stream of your lectures. And I think we are now uh, perfectly equipped to start the live event. And I'm looking forward to welcome you in person. Yes, I, I share the same feeling. Thank you very okay. much, Nikos. Thank you. Team. See you in Wiesbaden. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the Let's Talk Wireless IoT session. 
If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and stay up to date on the event website or on our LinkedIn page. Hope to see you for the next Let's Talk Wireless IoT episode or in Wiesbaden.